Hello and welcome to XYC. In this tutorial, we'll be using Blender and Animation Nodes to create the audio visualizer you see on screen. This is the first part of a tutorial series. Every part will guide you through the creation of a more complex visualizer. You should have Animation Nodes already installed and have at least a basic understanding of its functionality. If you are new to Animation Notes, check the video description for some resources that will help you get started. You should also keep any MP3 file ready that we'll be using to drive the visualizer. The one I'm using will be in the video description below. So let's get started. So let's start by adding a curve bezier. Go to Edit Mode. Change its type to Poly. So we have two, a spline with two points. And let's head over to the video sequencer first and load in our sound file that we prepared. The one I'll be using is uh, down in the description below. And I'll adjust the volume so it hopefully won't disturb in the recording. Then we can go over to animation notes. Let's get the timeline in here. And set the playback to frame dropping. So the moment we run the visualizer it will stop dropping frames if it can't hit the 30 frames we specified for the rendering. So let's create a new node graph. And we start out with the category sound and the sound spectrum. And here we can load the sound file we just loaded over the video se sequencer. This node has a uh, some settings that you can tweak later on and this will uh, change how the visualizer looks in the end so this node will be the driving factor behind the visualizer so we will get uh, a spline and get from object here we will use our bezier curve let's rename it real quick And we will use uh, this curve later on to change the length or the position of the visualizer because the visualizer will always follow this curve. So in the spline section, we have an evaluate. And let's actually check the advanced node settings on the spline and set that to single because if we leave that to all, we uh, animation node will just generate a new node for us that will just grab the first spline in the object, since a spline object can always have more splines in it than just one. And we can save the node by just setting it to single. Link that in. Let's get a few 3D node in here and look at the locations. And we actually want to set that to range count. And let's uh, sync up the count of the spectrum with the count of the evaluate sp spline. So uh, there are always the same amount of points on the spline generated, then we generate uh, spectrum points. an integer for that and let's link that in this will generate an error since it, the spectrum doesn't want a zero so let's set it to 10 for now and this will generate 10 points
and what we need now is so we have the base starting points of our visualizer now we need to offset these points so there is actually something happening once uh once we hit play and also let's get in a time info node since uh the sound spectrum needs a frame change so this time info will always input the current frame the moment the frame changes the output of the sound spectrum will also change And let's get in a matrix offset. And we will use the matrices of the evaluated points on the spline. And we want to offset the locations. And we want to offset the locations based on our spectrum. So let's combine a vector and use the spectrum as the C position and leave the rest to zero because we don't want to offset the x and y coordinates of our points just to c position and with the 3d viewer node we can actually look at the matrices and when we hit play these matrices should uh, change position in c which is very subtle, but we can just up the amplitude. This is very subtle on my end since I switched the volume down on my mp3 file. And I think that carries over into animation nodes. So I have to increase the amplitude to make it really pop. This should not be a problem uh, when the mp3 file is at the volume of one but that might be a problem with the recording since the sound would probably be way too loud but now we have our base points and the offset points and we want to use that to generate splines out of this so we will need a loop and this loop inputs two vector lists for the start point and one for the end point and for that we will use a create from points in the spline section and we have to use a list create a vector since the spline generation needs a vector list of at least two points to generate something and since uh, we don't need it to be Bezier curve, we can make it a poly one. So let's create a new output because we need that spline list that the loop generates. Let's get that out. And let's rename our loop so we know which one is which. Great splines. Then we can get the loop out of the way and actually have to invoke it. So we use the base location as the start point and our offset as the end point. Animation node will create a decompose matrix node for us. And the spline list that comes out of the loop, we will create an spline object output node. 
link the splines in, activate it and generate a new object. And let's get the viewer out of the way. And here is our new generated splines. And we can call them something we will remember later. So with this you could actually be done because we can just activate the bevel depth and do a bevel on these and you could actually already render this out. Let's create a new shader real quick. Something really simple, just an emission. should already work. No, there ain't no stopping us. So if you want it to look more uh, sharp and not rounded like my original visualizer then you can just use this and be done with a, a very minimal node setup but we'll continue and switch out the displaying rendering for actual meshes but this will uh, need some some more nodes so let's get back into solid view and let's create the meshes we need for rendering. We will need a UV sphere. Let's scale that down a bit. A bit more. So it won't be too big. And let's grab half of it. and separate it into a new object. Let's shake that smooth and rename them. This would be the start one. And let's actually create uh, vertex colors for every one of these. We'll be using them later for some shader effects. And we're gonna need one more mesh, which will be a cylinder. We're not going to use the caps, so get rid of them. And then we're gonna scale it down as well. And these should line up, so scale them. Oh, and I actually only want to scale this in x and y not the c And let's make sure that the cylinder is going from a zero position to plus one. Because that will help us later with our scaling. Grab the bottom edges and just get them up in the scene center. And let's make sure the scale of the objects should always be one. 
there shouldn't be a scale on it. So if you scaled it, not in edit mode, but in object mode, you have to apply the scale or uh, animation node will, when we create the node graph, graph later on, will uh, reset the scale for you and the scale will be off. So we'll be, let's not forget to generate the vertex colors. And let's rename that as well. This will be the center portion. And then we're gonna need an object instancer. And let's create an instancer for every one of our three objects. So we're gonna have the start. the end and the center and let's link that up with our integer as well there will be exactly as many instances as we need and everything is adjusted with a single value so if we up that integer value, we will adjust the amount of points we generate on the spline, the points we generate in the spectrum, and also our instances will be driven by that. Then we have to set them at the right position, and we will use a matrix output node for every one of them. Let's link that up. And then we have to input the right matrices. And for the start one, it will be just the ones that come out the evaluate spline node. And let's get rid of the initial instance objects so they're not in the way. For the endpoints, we will use our offsetted positions. And for our center pieces, we not only need to position it, but also to uh, get the scale right. So we will use another offset matrix node. And we will use the initial matrices from the evaluate spline, then activate the scale. And we wanna scale this based on the length of our splines that we generated. So we need to come down to our loop. There will be a get length node in the spline section. And we just run that in and then we need another output, which will be a float list. Rename the output spline length. And that will show up in our invoke subprogram node. And we have to generate a vector out of this, so combine vector. We will be driving the C position, and X and Y should be always one. And with that, the scaling adjusts to the right size. And we can just play the animation and it will always scale to the right size. What I would also like to do is uh, offset the start positions so you can have 
uh, you can have them offset to the bottom or even have the visualizer uh, going to being inverted so not going to the top but going to the bottom so we duplicate the offset matrix node we use the initial matrices and then we're gonna use a math node invert the spectrum into the negative space and then create another vector out of it just the c position again and we will offset it that way and link the new offset into our loop as the start position This will generate a new decompose matrix node since it only needs the translation. And we will also have to adjust the other offset matrix nodes and also the start position since the start position can now change downwards so we have to make sure to use the right uh, matrix output and with that we can use the fall off to either change the bottom or change the top and with that invert our visualizer or make it mirrored like in this case one more thing is still uh, to do we created uh, vertex colors on our instance objects and we're gonna use that to uh, drive some shader effects but for that we need to generate some vertex colors and we do that by going to color set vertex color we cannot link uh, an object list into the set vertex colors since it will always uh, default to just using the first object or the object that is specified in the index so we have to loop through these objects and with that we create another loop as input we need uh, object lists and three of them for all of our objects this will be the start object the end object and the center object and the fourth value will be a float list which will be the spectrum which will drive the vertex color value so let's link the objects up and duplicate the set vertex color nodes and let's use a combined color node for the spectrum and link that into the color and I would also like to have a map range node in here 
so I can adjust uh, the range in which it is mapped to 0 and 1 because the spectrum might not be high enough to actually trigger uh, the shader change. So we have one more uh, layer to adjust for that. So let's name the loop. And get it out of the way. And we of course have to invoke it. Otherwise nothing will be happening. Let's link in the objects and the spectrum. And we have to uh, activate the deep copy on our instance of nodes because otherwise every uh, object will have the same vertex color because they keep overriding each other since not every instance will be a separate mesh but they will all share a single mesh and let's reduce the map range node for now so we will see in the shader instantly what is going on and we can go to rendered Let's get rid of the light. They're all black for now because we haven't added a shader yet. So let's add our shader to every one of them. Disable them shortly and enable them. And this will re-trigger uh, the recreation of the objects in animation nodes. And let's head over to our shader and look at that. We're gonna use the vertex color, the red channel that we used in animation nodes. And we're gonna blend between two different colors. And now depending on how high the spectrum value goes, uh, you can shift between two colors. What I would also like to have as functionality is to adjust the scale of the visualizer and maybe have a fade in and fade out effect. And for that, we need another uh, offset matrix node. And we're gonna offset the scale of all the objects. And let's, for the start and end, we will use a scale of zero. And for the center portion, we only need to scale the X and Y and leave the C unchanged. And I'm gonna create an invert fall off node and link the fall offs. So when we adjust the fall off, we can just fade in and fade out the visualizer or change its scale on a more global, on a global level.
but that is it for the linear audio visualizer. There will be a second part where we will look at a radial implementation. Some of the notes will be the same, but we have to adjust some stuff. So check back soon and see you next time. No, there ain't no stopping us. Fly without boarding pass. Couldn't catch me, I'll be moving fast. Call me a shooting star.